Hello there friends and welcome, for today's Baldur's Gate 3 guide we have all about the best spells in the game, and we'll be covering every single class for both arcane and also divine spells. Druid, sorcerer, warlock, cleric, everything is here. Mastering spells is key to ensuring your victory especially on tactician mode, because well you'll have a spell for every single situation possible. Crowd control, damage both single target and area of effect, debuffing, buffing, and of course many powerful summon spells too. The main reason I'm doing this guide before the builds come is because I don't want to have to repeat myself as to why I'm picking certain spells on every caster build, right? It's better to have it all in one neat little place. So without further ado, let us get into our best spells guide. And we'll be going level by level, first with the arcane spells, so the ones cast by warlocks, sorcerers and wizards. Bards too. After that we'll go for the divine and nature spells. And we have to begin by covering cantrips, of course. After all, they are absolutely amazing in Baldur's Gate 3, as opposed to other D&D games. First, cantrips are actually infinite casts, right? You don't spend a spell slot to cast them. Now, the best generic one for damage is definitely Firebolt. It deals 1d10 fire damage at the start, as a ranged attack, and while the game doesn't tell you this like a lot of other stuff, it does scale in level, the same for the other damage cantrips like Bone 2. At level 5, the damage will double to 2d10, meanwhile at level 10 it will triple for 3 to 30 damage, quite decent. Especially when you consider, depending on your archetype and gear choices, your cantrips like Firebolt can deal amazing damage even late game by stacking a lot of nice extra sources. As far as the other damage cantrips, they aren't just as useful, because They'll either deal lower damage, 1d8 usually, such as Bone Chew or Ray of Frost, or offer a saving throw for no effect. You absolutely do not want the cantrips that have a saving throw like Acid Splash, because if the enemy saves, well, they won't take any damage at all, it's just a waste. Might as well just go with Firebolt, or if you want an extra debuff, Ray of Frost, because it can reduce the enemy's movement speed, or Bone Chew against Undead, to force them to attack at disadvantage and also prevent healing from certain enemies. But overall, Firebolt is the way to go. The other cantrips are mostly for utility. Light of course can be quite useful to create light sources, especially as some enemies in the game like Shadows have abilities or receive bonuses if they are under darkness. With light you can overcome that. Lastly, Blade Ward can be quite handy too, especially if cast from martial characters like clerics that can also use spells, as it will make you fully resistant to all physical damage in the game, bludgeoning, piercing and slashing, no matter if it's enchanted or not. I don't think it needs any saying taking half damage is amazing for, let's say, a cleric that wants to tank. You can prep buff with it, but the duration is rather short, at two turns, so ideally you want to cast it during battle, because it's two turns though, at least you won't have to recast it on every single turn. For utility, Mage Hand can be useful too for object manipulation, especially for example if you want to steal characters or move heavier objects and so on. Now let's get into level 1 Arcane Spells. First we have Sleep, which is one of the best forms of crowd control early game, especially very early. It doesn't offer a saving throw at all, so the enemies can't really resist it, Rather, it will affect enemies up to a certain number of hit points, starting at 24, which can then become higher if you upcast it as a higher level spell slot. 24 might not seem like much, but earlier on the enemies don't have very high hit points, even on Tactician mode. Of course, if you are on Tactician, starting from let's say level 3+, plus, enemies start getting way more hit points, so it won't be as useful. In any case, this spell has received an upgrade to its targeting, especially when compared to early access. You can now choose the targets individually, depending on their hit points, and the game will tell you if you go over the cap, so it's way easier to use. Shield is an amazing buff too, because it is cast as a reaction, meaning usually it will come during the enemy's turn, when they try to attack you. Shield will increase your AC by plus 5 for one attack, so long as the attack was about to hit you, you can then use a reaction, and the attack will miss. Because you can always cast it as a higher level slot too, you'll never run out of shield uses. 
which can help your more frail casters avoid most importantly ranged attacks. Protection from evil and good is quite the handy buff to have too. It will make enemies of certain types, aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiends and undead, attack your character with disadvantage, which of course highly increases the chances of their attacks missing, especially when it comes to avoiding critical hits too. Plus make you immune to charmed and frightened against these types. Of course, because a lot of enemies aren't of these types, most of them to be fair, be sure to only cast this when you truly need it, especially when fighting undead. The other enemy types aren't that common, besides of aberrations for mind flayers. It has very high duration to one, too long rest, but does require concentration. The ever so handy magic missile is still quite useful in Baldur's Gate 3, mostly because it's guaranteed damage, right? At level 1 you'll fire 3 darts and you can choose the targets including multiple enemies, or just the 3 on the same each dealing 2 to 5 force damage, with the bonus of always hitting the target, together with the fact force is almost never resisted by enemies. Of course, very early game when you have a few number of level 1 spell slots only, you might as well spend them with other spells such as area of effect ones. Mage armor is another amazing buff, it doesn't require concentration, has very high duration, and will set your character's AC to 13, plus your dexterity mod. Just remember you cannot be wearing any armor at all for this to work, including even let's say helmets, so long as they aren't clothing. There is still a lot of other nice level 1 spells to cover, and Long Strider is one of them, is definitely one of the must have level 1 buffs. Because this spell is cast by default as a ritual spell, which means you have infinite uses of it, so long as you do it outside of battle, you can cast it as many times as you want and it will increase the movement speed of any creature, even summons, by 3 meters, quite handy to have because everyone can benefit from higher movement. Especially as movement tends to be tied to both jumping and even flying. Honestly, as I said, it's infinite uses. There is no reason whatsoever not to have this on every single one of your party members, 24 hours even, all the time, because it doesn't require concentration and lasts until long rest. Fog Cloud is another amazing spell, this time we have our first crowd control outside of sleep. Because just like sleep, it does not offer a saving throw at all. You cast it and the enemies inside will become blinded 100% of the time. Blinded is an amazing debuff, right, because it forces disadvantage on enemy attacks while granting you advantage on all party member hits. This is much better for ranged party members, right, because melee targets will have to move close to the fog but you can always aim it at the edge of enemies, right? So you attack at melee without being blinded yourself. Find Familiar is a very good spell too. And as far as all of the summoning spells, I'll keep it short and simple for this guide because please remember that I've just released a complete summon spells guide where I cover all of the summoning spells in depth. But anyways, the best pick here is the Raven, so that it can blind enemies on hit. Together with Flying. This is also cast as a ritual spell, but it will replenish only on a short rest, as opposed to Long Strider, which is infinite uses. And there's no penalty whatsoever to your familiar dying, just resummon it again. False Life can be handy to have because it does require concentration and grants you temporary hit points, but this is better left for when your character is higher level, right? So you have more low level spells slots to spare, as the effect will scale based on spell level whenever you upcast it. This guy self doesn't really have any gameplay benefits as far as I know, it's mostly for cosmetics, right, to change your character's looks. And if you got the deluxe edition, you'll have a mask that has infinite uses of this anyways, so no use in casting it. Meanwhile, Chromatic Orb is quite the versatile spell to have. You can choose a number of different orbs depending on the element, and some of these will actually leave a corresponding Element Puddle on the ground, for example, if you cast the Cold Variant, it leaves a Cold Puddle which will then force enemies to save, otherwise they'll get knocked down when attempting to move past it. And you can also combine it with certain debuffs that make enemies take higher damage from elemental attacks, for example, if the enemy is wet, they'll take higher damage from Thunder and Cold. So just go with the corresponding Element Variant. Now for level 2 Arcane spells that you gain at level 3, First we have Scorching Ray, 
By default, this spell fires 3 rays, just like Magic Missile, you can also choose the targets or have them all be unleashed on the same enemy. And each ray deals 2 to 12 fire damage. This is much better when combined with classes that can enhance their damage further, for example, Warlock through the Hex spell for an extra 1d6 to each individual Scorching Ray proc, or of course the Dragon Bloodline Sorcerer which can enhance their fire damage per tick. When also combined with certain gear choices, you can unleash a true fire machine gun upon your enemies later in the game, for even higher than 100 fire damage per cast, it gets that good. When you upcast it, for higher race fired. Misty Step is another amazing utility spell. By default it's cast as a bonus action which means you can combine it with another spell in the same round. And to put it simply is amazing for battlefield movement, because it lets your caster teleport to pretty much almost anywhere on the map while ignoring height and elevations. It can be a true lifesaver or just to move characters away from the reach of certain enemies like melee targets while benefiting from high ground bonuses. The mirror image spell can be good too, but only if you want to directly tank with your spellcaster, right? It doesn't require concentration, but will increase your armor class by a massive amount, although it gets reduced by each enemy strike. And well, will only last for a single battle usually, it's not a long lasting spell. The flaming sphere spell can have its uses as well. I didn't really cover it in my summon guide, so I'll talk more about it here. It does summon a creature, a huge flaming boulder, and the best part is that it has a fire aura, right? So, so long as the enemies are nearby, they'll take 2d6 fire damage per round, which can add up early game. You can also have the sphere ram enemies for higher fire damage, but it does require a roll to hit. And unlike most of the other summons, concentration will be required as well. Last but not least, the sphere itself is quite tanky because it's fully resistant to quite a lot of damage sources, including physical. Darkness can have its uses too by blinding enemies, but well, you might as well use Fog Cloud which comes earlier. And don't forget, some creatures can see under darkness, right, through for example the Dark Vision feature, quite a lot of them even. Cloud of Daggers can help early on as a lingering form of area of effect damage. Sadly, you cannot move the cloud afterwards, which is a bit annoying, so it's stuck in place. But it's 4 to 16 damage on every round. Blur can be quite handy too, once again just like Mirror Image, if you want to tank with your caster, by forcing all enemies to have disadvantage on their attacks against you. But unlike Mirror Image, it does require concentration, which is why I say you really need to want to tank with your character for this because concentration is a very, let's say, competitive resource. Now we are at level 3 Arcane Spells, and if you've ever played other D&D games, then you know this is when things start getting really fun, mostly because of the ever so classic haste. Now it's not as good as in, let's say, Pathfinder and Neverwinter Nights, because in Baldur's Gate, it only hits a single target, but the effect is still extremely powerful, right? It lasts 10 turns, so the entire battle, and the affected target will get first a plus 2 bonus to AC, so great for tanking, advantage on dexterity saving throws, great for avoiding most spell damage, doubled movement speed, and the best part, one additional action per turn, which can of course result in more spells, or most importantly more melee and ranged attacks. It does have a downside however, because when the condition ends, you'll become lethargic, which basically skips your turn. Now, since haste does require concentration, I find it much better used either as a potion, and you'll get plenty of potions of speed early, on let's say maybe characters that wouldn't have any concentration effect on anyways, or as a sorcerer, because you can then use the twin meta magic spell ability to cast haste on two targets at once. The main reason is level 3 spells are really good, and haste has to compete with a lot of nice crowd control even damage too. For example, Hypnotic Pattern, one of the best crowd control we have in the game. First, the area of effect is massive, it does have friendly fire though, but if the enemies fail a wisdom saving throw, they'll become hypnotized, which means they cannot do anything at all for two entire turns. However, if they take damage, 
the effect will disappear. This can even be cast while silenced, which is great for combining it with the Cleric's Silence spell too, to shut spellcasters down. But my favorite level 3 CC spell is Slow. First, the targeting is way better than Hypnotic Pattern, because you can actually choose which enemies to target for a maximum of 6. Slowed enemies will be heavily debuffed, half movement speed, minus 2 to armor class and dexterity saving throws, which is massive for a game like Baldur's Gate 3, will not be able to make any reactions and be stuck with just one single attack per turn. Great, because even early game you already have enemies making 2 to 3 attacks, like Nanos. And it can even delay enemy spellcasting too, which is amazing. Unlike Hypnotic Pattern, enemies cannot remove this effect at all, unless they save against it, which is very hard to do if you are stacking gear that increases the spell DC. And trust me, there's a lot of them in Baldur's Gate 3. Anyways, another great part about Slow is that because it reduces the enemy's AC by minus 2, you can then combine it with, let's say, Fog Cloud, or any other source of granting you advantage on attacks against the enemies, right? Because these sources won't really stack together. Reduction to armor class with advantage will, however. Anyways, all these reasons I wire tend to prefer slow other than hypnotic pattern. Also note that, at least on Tactician, the enemies are smart enough to damage their own allies just to remove the hypnotize effect. No such thing with slow. Because all are concentration, you kinda have to choose between hasting allies or slowing enemies, except, well, you can slow the entire enemy pack. Haste, at most you'll get two, if you are a sorcerer. Anyways, now let's talk about damage spells. There's the classic Fireball, which can be useful, but to me, Fireball is better the more allies you have that can cast it. For example, let's say you have one Warlock, one Sorcerer and one Wizard. All can cast Fireball. Because the thing is, 8 to 48 damage isn't particularly useful. But when you have triple that, right, that's when things start getting really fun and when you can really one-shot multiple enemies at once. I'd still much rather slow, right, because, well, Fireball isn't as efficient in my humble opinion, especially if you only have a single caster, like Gale. There's another amazing level 3 spell for utility called Counterspell. Just like Shield, it's also cast as a reaction. What this spell does is simple. Whenever the enemies try to cast a spell on your characters, it doesn't have to be on the counter spell caster themselves. As a reaction, you'll get to use counter spell to fully block the spell's effect. I don't think it needs any saying that's quite powerful. Besides that, we also have the first true summon spell in the game, Animate Dead, to create undead allies, and I have already covered it together with all other summon spells in my Summoner and Necromancer guide. Do note that sorcerers all lack the summon spells, however, unlike wizards. As for level 4 arcane spells, there's some nice fix here too. First, wall of fire, which can add a lot of nice damage, you can even shape the wall itself, depending if you want it to be bigger or shorter. And of course, by virtue of being a concentration spell, the wall will linger on the field, right? So, in a few ways, it can be more efficient than Fireball, which is spent with a single cast. Wall of Fire will last you the whole battle. Confusion can be quite good too. Unlike Hypnotic Pattern, it does not have friendly fire. It's just that, honestly, to me, you are way better off just going for slow, right? Because these all require concentration, and you're stuck with one per character. Another amazing level 4 spell is Conjure Minor Elemental, especially if you choose the Mud Methods, which can muddy enemies so that your allies have advantage on their attacks against them. And you Conjure 2 per cast. Besides that, Greater Invisibility can make for quite a powerful buff too. But once again, because it's concentration, it kinda competes with haste. Especially if you are a sorcerer, but the effect is very strong. The invisible ally will have advantage on all of their attacks, meanwhile enemies will have disadvantage when trying to attack them. And this will last after you attack, unlike the normal invisibility spell, for 10 turns, so the whole battle. But to me, I'd much rather haste, if you're going for that, instead of crowd control. Now let us go over level 5 arcane spells. The best pick here to me is actually a summon, Conjure Elemental. All of the elementals are very good, but the fire stands out as the best because it can combo by burning enemies with a normal attack and then using its multi-attack for double damage against burning enemies, together with a minor fireball ability. Of course, like all summons, the more characters you have that can cast it, the more summons you'll have. Telekinesis is a great choice too, 
because it's quite efficient, right? You cast it once, but it lasts for 10 turns, which means on every turn after, you'll get to use the effect on another enemy without spending a spell slot. And to put it simply, it's great for moving enemies around the battlefield, especially if they are at higher elevations, like casters tend to be, because you can then drop them down for huge damage. And they don't tend to have high strength, too. You do have some damage spells on level 5, like Cone of Cold and Cloud Q, but honestly, if you were going for area of effect damage, I'd much rather just use up Scaled Fireball. At least Cloud Q is lingering damage, but it's around 20 per turn and can hit allies too. Now we are at last at level 6 Arcane Spells, the last spell level we have so far. The best spell here is actually an upcast version of a lower level spell, that's right. Because when you cast Conjure Elemental as a level 6 spell, you'll get to summon Elemental Myrmidons, which are absolutely amazing, they have very high stats, including great hit points and armor class, and the Water Myrmidon is absolutely busted. It has both a huge area of effect healing ability, together with a massive area of effect damage. If you have triple Water Elementals, for example, you can deal around 27d6 damage on all enemies as an area of effect per turn, because elementals, just like most summons, when it comes to their abilities and spells, they can cast them at will, that is, once per turn. Not like your poor characters that have to rest. Anyways, we have some other nice level 6 spells too. Wall of Ice can deal massive damage, but it's rather situational, right, because the huge damage boost comes only if the ice is broken. Create Undead is another decent enough summon, a mummy, but it's nowhere near as good as the Elemental Myrmidons, and you kind of have to compete with them at the same level, right? Disintegrate, on the other hand, is one of the best single-target damage spells, because it's force and huge damage, but does offer a dexterity saving throw for half, which is kind of annoying. Honestly, depending on your class for single-target, I'd much rather just spam Scorching Ray, which can deal higher than 100. Eyebite has some uses as well, because just like Telekinesis, you can keep on using the spell every single turn without spending a new spell slot. But it's single target only. You can put enemies to sleep or inflict fear. I'd much rather area of effect at this point, however, like slow. The other level 6 spells are kinda subpar. Stuff like Otto's Irresistible Dance, for example. Well, I don't know why they kept the name, because it's not irresistible anymore. Right, before it worked without a saving throw, now it offers a save, so who cares? The same for Flash to Stone. I'd honestly just go for the Elemental Myrmidon, or upscaled versions of lower spells. Although Disintegrate can help. Now let us get into the best Divine and Nature spells from both Cleric and Druid. Thankfully they always have all of their spells available, so it's easier to properly show them here. Some spells are shared with Arcane Casters, and of course if I've already covered them there, I won't repeat myself here. Anyways, when it comes to cantrips, Guidance is absolutely a must-have. Trust me, it's really good. It's plus 1d4 bonus to ability checks, which includes all skill checks, right? Persuasion, Intimidation, Insight, Perception, Lockpicking, Disarming, all of that will be boosted by Guidance. And the fact you have it on infinite uses, with 10 turns duration per cast, well, honestly, it might seem silly, but you absolutely want whoever you have ahead or speaking with NPCs to be constantly buffed with guidance. It's that good. After all, saves coming for failed skill checks, for example, can be quite annoying. With guidance, you can really avoid that, most of the times anyways. The Thaumaturgy cantrip some casters get is also quite useful, right? By granting advantage, mostly on intimidation checks, which highly increases the chances of them working. There's not that many performance checks otherwise. Now when it comes to level 1 Divine and Nature spells, first we have Bless. Bless is, to put it simply, the most common way of increasing your character's attack rolls and saving throws, mostly attack rolls because you don't want to miss, especially on Tactician with higher enemy AC. It does require concentration, however, which is a bit annoying, but can hit multiple allies at once. Three at the start with an additional target per each higher spell level when upcasting. Bane, on the other hand, is the opposite of Bless. Except it affects enemies, of course, 
The problem with Bane is while the effect is powerful, it does require concentration too and offers a saving throw, so ideally it's much better to just blast your characters because at least it's always gonna work. Healing Word is another amazing spell because it's your main source of healing as a bonus action, which means you can both cast a normal spell and combine it with Healing Word on the same round. Plus, the range is absolutely massive as opposed to, let's say, Cure Wounds, even if the healing effect is weaker. It's especially useful for bringing down characters back before they truly die. Guiding Bolt can have its uses as well, because the damage is quite big for a level 1 spell. Plus, the next attack roll against the affected enemy will have advantage, but it only works for one single attack afterwards. Create or destroy water amusingly enough has its uses too, especially create water, because as I've explained before, if you make enemies sweat from water, they'll take double damage from electricity or cold which can be nice for combining with your arcane casters like wizards and sorcerers. Now, while Blast is the main source of bonuses to AB, Shield of Faith is the best one to increase your armor class early. After all, it's plus 2 to AC, huge in BG3, and lasts forever, but is a concentration effect, so kinda clashes with Blast, because you cannot have both on the same caster at the same time. It's better if you have multiple divine casters, so one goes for Blast and the other Shield of Faith. Divine Favor can add minor, extra damage on hit, but is a concentration effect. It can be cast as a bonus action at least. Thing is, I'd much rather shoot a Faith or Blast for the concentration. Level 1 Nature casters also have some exclusive spells. Most importantly, Fairy Fire. I mean, Bards get access to this too, but it's mostly Druids. Fairy Fire is, to put it simply, the best form of early game debuffing. It hits a huge area, and if the enemies fail a Dexterity saving throw, all of your party members' attack will have advantage against them. The best part is how huge the duration is, 10 turns, it lasts for the whole battle. And there's no chance of the enemies healing from this effect. If they get hit with it once, they're stuck with it for the rest of the battle. While it does require concentration, the effect is so strong that honestly, it remains useful for the whole game. Speak with animals is just here because, well, it can be fun and you also have a few animal exclusive quests. Plus, it's a ritual spell, right, so won't really cost a spell slot. As far as Entangle, while the effect can be strong, it's a strength saving troll, so nowhere near as good as Dexterity, which tends to be lower for most enemies. Plus, the area of effect is kinda small now, as opposed to Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Fairy Fire is way better, because Entangled enemies can save on every turn. Fairy Fire, as I explained, nope, you'll be stuck with it. Now, for the best level 2 divine spells, let's start with the ultimate one already, Aid. Aid is quite the handy buff to have because it doesn't require concentration, hits your whole party including summons, and by default it will increase their maximum hit points by plus 5, with a further plus 5 increased when upcast by each spell level. Eventually you can gain even around plus 20 to the hit points of all party members, and the best part is it will stack with temporary hit point sources, right? Because this isn't temporary HP, it rather increases your hit points maximum value. So as Terran here has close to 120 normal hit points, boosted by 8, together with 48 temporary. Silence can be another great divine spell too, especially to shut enemy spellcasters down. Plus, if cast outside of battle, it won't cost any spell slot as a ritual spell. And since it's area of effect, you can easily do it because of how long-lasting it is, by setting proper ambushes and so on. Warding Bond can have its uses for tanking, You'll get to ward an ally and they'll have resistance to all damage, which is amazing, right? 50% taken from all sources, together with a bonus to armor class and saving throws. What this spell doesn't tell you, at least not the main description, is that after warding an ally, each time your ally takes damage, you'll also take the same amount of damage, so it can be a bit dangerous depending on who you're casting it on. So you'll now have resistance to everything. Plus, this spell does not require concentration at all. Spiritual Weapon, on the other hand, is a cleric exclusive summon that can be quite handy. First, it's cast as a bonus action, and you can cast it directly on top of the enemy even. The only limitation is unlike all the other summons, most of them anyways, it only lasts 10 turns, so you'll have to cast it on subsequent battles. But the weapon itself is actually resistant to almost all sources of damage, so can be quite good at tanking early on, even later too. As for level 2 nature spells, there are some unique ones here that really stand out. 
First we have Spike Growth, a favorite of mine. It's quite a cheesy spell too. Unfortunately, unlike in Solasta, you can't really stack it on top of itself for multiple instances of damage taken. What the spell does is, first, the area of effect is massive. Second, it will damage enemies even when you first cast it. Third, it's difficult terrain, so movement will be halved inside the area. Last but not least, and this is the best effect, anyone that tries to move inside it will take 2 to 8 piercing damage for every 1.5 meters, which can add up quite nicely because, like I said, it cuts enemies' movement down too, for more instances of this. Of course, later in the game where enemies have a lot of hit points, it's not going to be that noticeable, but, well, the more damage, the better, right? And early on, it just melts enemies. Don't forget, characters that can fly can ignore this, including our own party members and summons. Moonbeam is another favorite of mine, it's druid only. While the damage itself might not be that good, but you can upscale it for higher damage, the fact is this spell is extremely efficient, right? Because you cast it once, but every turn afterwards, without spending a new spell slot, you can move the Moonbeam to deal more area of effect damage to enemies. So with just one cast, you have 2 to 20 damage for the whole battle on every turn, while conserving your spell slots. It's definitely better than the arcane equivalent Cloud of Daggers, for example, because you can move the cloud. For level 3 divine spells, first we have Revivify, which is the main source of, well, reviving allies. And this is for when they truly die, that is, they get knocked down, and then if they take too much damage afterwards, they will eventually die for the Grey Portrait. It's also quite good in that, it has a certain range and you can choose where the revived ally will spawn, which of course helps by not having them spawn directly on top of enemies, meaning you'll just die again, if you know what I mean. Mass Healing Ward is well the area of effect version of Healing Ward. While the effect is low, remember it's cast as a bonus action and heals an amazing amount of allies at once. This is better for combining with certain gear that has benefits whenever healing allies, so you can apply them to all of your healed allies. Daylight can have its uses too, it doesn't require concentration, you can either create a sphere of daylight on the ground, but the best use is to enchant one of your weapons or armor with it instead, so it moves with you forever. And just like the light cantrip, some enemies in the game, like Drow and other Underdark foes, Shadows too, have weaknesses and penalties when fighting under sunlight. Spirit Guardians, on the other hand, is honestly the best area of effect cleric spell ever. It does require concentration, but the effect is very strong. You'll create a rather decent area of effect around you that only hits enemies for 3 to 24, either radiant or necrotic damage you can choose, while also reducing their movement speed. And you can increase the damage by upcasting because it's applied per turn, and all it takes is for the enemies to exist inside the area, right? Or for you to move to where they are, it can be quite efficient, and one of the best sources of area of effect damage. It's even better when combined with certain gear that applies debuffs whenever the enemies take radiant damage. Crusader's Mantle can have its uses as well, but honestly it's better for a summoner party, right? By default, every ally nearby will do an additional 1v4 radiant damage. The thing is, when you have an overwhelming amount of summons, that's 1d4 times what, 30 attacks? It can really add up. For just a party of 4 party members, it's well not gonna do much. As for level 3 nature spells, the one that really stands out here is Call Lightning. It works almost exactly the same as Moonbeam, except the damage is higher and it's lightning. Very efficient too because it lasts for the whole battle and on every subsequent turn, you can choose a new area to target and blast with lightning, without spending a new spell slot. As for level 4, divine spells, there's not that many, I'm using enough, only 3. And honestly, they aren't that good, I'd rather use upscaled low level ones, like aid and spirit guardians we just covered. Death Ward can have some uses, if the ally dies, they'll revive with one hit point, but... I mean, it's not the end of the world or anything. After all, you can just cast healing spells to bring them back from death or revivify. Guardian of Faith can be somewhat decent, but it's a stationary summon, which I don't enjoy. Now, Druids do have an exclusive and very powerful level 4 spell, Conjure Woodland Beam. This will summon a Dryad that by herself is quite powerful, but she can also summon 
a trend for you, so it's two summons for the price of one. Level 5 nature and divine spells are rather poor too, I'm afraid. I'd much rather just use upscaled versions of lower spells, just like level 4. The druids at least can conjure elementals at this level, clerics not really. As for level 6, there's actually some great spells here for once. Clerics have the exclusive planar ally, which can summon a demon, an angel, or a genie for you. The genie being the best because of its special abilities. Heal is the highest source of healing, 70 right at once, but I still wouldn't use it as a level 6 spell slot because of how few you have, I'd rather the summons, which are long-lasting. And besides that, you have the highly powerful Hero's Feast buff. Does not require concentration. The first effect is just like 8, it will increase your maximum hit points by 12, and does stack with 8 by the way, for this purpose at least. Together with quite a lot of nice stuff, immunity to disease, poison, frightened, and advantage on wisdom saving throws, plus it will hit pretty much your entire party when you cast it, just like 8. Clerics have Blade Barrier 2, which can deal nice enough damage as an area of effect, but like I said, because you only have a single level 6 spell slot, I'd rather the planner ally summon. As for druids and nature casters, it's pretty much the same, just go with the elemental Myrmidon like arcane casters, or hero's feast. Well alright friends, so this was it for my best spells guide for Pathfinder, <laughs> for Baldur's Gate 3 I mean. If you think I missed a certain spell you find very useful, please be sure to comment down below. And please remember to like, subscribe and consider becoming a channel member too if you can. Thank you for watching, see you next time friends.